Michael Johnson and a friend are joyriding down the freeway in a stolen Cadillac. Their gas tank running on empty. Now one with your emergency. You see him on work at the Lorena Fest, I'm in Lorena, Texas, and the kid that was stopping me has just been shot by somebody that came up here and got gas and drove off. That's right, should I rob you? No, ma'am, he just said got gas, and I think they just took off with the gas. Oh, my God. On Michael Johnson's side, there will be no witness to shed a tear. The convicted killer has decided to go it alone. The way I see it, man, the reason people have witnesses there is to gain a little comfort for themselves. So they look over, so they're, ultimately they're trying to not have to do it by themselves, but you're going to have to do it by yourself. You're the one that's dying. And those are people that care about you. And so they're, they're watching you die. So you know that's going to traumatize you, especially your mother. And what you're doing is in order to gain that little bit of comfort for yourself, you're shifting that burden onto them because they're going to walk away with that and you're going to be gone. So I would just rather keep it myself. I'll just do it myself. The inmate has also refused a last meal. Because that, to me, that's like they're mocking you. That's like slapping you in the face and, you know, we're going to kill you. But we're going to let you get your eat on first. So I was like, you know what? You can keep that last meal. I don't want any of it. And as for a possible last statement? I don't know. Off or something. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed about it. And I, I don't know. After his final interview, Johnson will return to his cell. Unrepentant, unforgiven, and hell-bent on the ultimate act of defiance. Prison officials say some words were written in blood on Johnson's jail cell wall. We don't yet know what those words are. Eleven years have come and gone since the murder of Jeff Wetterman. Now the stage is set for this tragedy's final scene. But Michael Johnson... We have some breaking news for you this hour. A Texas death row inmate who was expected to be executed tonight in Huntsville has been found dead in his jail cell. At 2.45 a.m., prison guards found Michael Johnson in a pool of blood, dead by his own hand. Shock. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. At the same time Johnson was ending his life, attorney Greg White was still trying to save it. Uh, Danny, this is Greg White in Waco, Michael Johnson. I mean, the times that I've met with him, that's not what he talked about. He wasn't focused on, you know, I'm going to die or I'm going to go out my own way or, you know, just nothing said ever. Um, that would make you go, I mean, I think this guy is not all right. State prison officials claim Johnson was on suicide watch and checked every 15 minutes. News travels quickly throughout Texas, reaching the victim's widow by phone call from a local reporter. And I said, have you talked to the Department of Criminal Justice? And I said, no. And she said, well, Michael Johnson committed suicide last night in his cell. And I was stunned. <laughs> And I said, I just said, I gotta go. And I, just, you know, hung up with her and started calling. And officials say some words were written in blood on Johnson's jail cell wall. We don't yet know what those words are. There, there have been reports, and, and we have confirmed that, yes, there was a message that he had scrawled in blood on the wall. By mid-morning, the contents of Johnson's bloody message are the primary subject of media speculation. Reporters have been saying that he, he had an indication of innocence or that he was expressing innocence. According to several reports, Johnson's last statement, written in his own blood, was, I didn't do it.